Well, has now served less time as Prime Minister than either uh, Kevin Rudd or Julia Gillard. The statistics will now come out. These uh, And the last Prime Minister to serve a full term was John Howard, believe it or not. So Malcolm Turnbull's always aspired to the Lodge, hasn't he? This has been his dream and uh, he lost by one vote to Tony Abbott in uh, a few years back now in an election ballot. So he's got his dream. Well, he announced then, after he lost, that, that he was going to leave politics. Uh, and he'd, he'd made all the arrangements, uh, uh, but, but then he was persuaded that he should change his mind, that he should stick around, serve on the front bench under Tony Abbott. Uh, he's done that, and, uh, and now he's Prime Minister. OK, so what happens from here? What do you think uh, in terms of Abbott supporters and Turnbull supporters? How does he play this now, Malcolm Turnbull? Is it, will Joe Hockey go? Will, where will Scott Morrison fit in and so on, Laurie? Well, yeah, Joe Hockey will have to go. There's no doubt about that. Uh, Joe Hockey's regarded as almost as much of a problem for the government as Tony Abbott. Uh, Scott Morrison, I'm certain, will become Treasurer. Uh, and uh, Julie Bishop, as we heard, remains Deputy Leader. Uh, Kevin Andrews ran, I think, just as a gesture. He would have known he was going to get wiped out. Pretty silly gesture, really. But it does show that there is bitterness there. Uh, Joe Hockey, Kevin Andrews, Matthias Corman, and other ministers who s remained loyal to Tony Abbott earlier tonight were pretty scathing about Malcolm Turnbull. Uh, and uh, Matthias Corman I, uh, was pretty scathing about Julie Bishop. So there's bitterness there. There are divisions that have to be healed. And not just in the party, strong liberal supporters, conservative right-wing supporters outside the party, including some very powerful radio shock jocks, don't like Mr Turnbull. In, in Sydney, Ray Headley this morning showed his absolute scorn for Malcolm Turnbull. And that's pretty dangerous uh, uh, for the new Prime Minister. He will need Scott Morrison. Uh, who's on good terms with those Conservatives to try and build bridges with them. And just to give you, give you an idea, uh, Malcolm Turnbull's already getting a bad time from some newspapers. Pete, here's tomorrow's front page in the Herald Sun in Melbourne referring to him as Malcolm Turncoat. So that's not the kind of headline he would have wanted on his first day. No, not indeed. Uh, Laurie, is this a much about, as much about political survival for a lot of the people who voted for Turnbull tonight, saying, well, I want to hitch my horse now to a better cart because I need to keep my seat and keep, keep in power, as opposed to perhaps their philosophical views and their thoughts about where Tony Abbott's going to take them? Yeah, it's absolutely about that. Uh, the, the, the government has been flatlining in the polls, uh, six to eight percentage points behind the Labor Party in the polls. They were heading over the electoral cliff they knew that, particularly Liberals in marginal seats were terrified, and particularly in Victoria and South Australia, where Tony Abbott is really on the nose. Uh, th that's where the, the strength of the Turnbull candidacy came from. There was a powerful Victorian contingent in that group that walked into the, uh, uh, the party room with him, and they were mostly Conservatives uh, from uh, Victoria and adds a whole lot of interest to this canning by-election in Western Australia this Saturday because they were sliding the swing against uh, the coalition and the Liberals was, was quite strong about 10% now to see where Malcolm Turnbull, if he can pull the votes back if you like. That's right and there was criticism of Malcolm Turnbull for launching a challenge uh, a few days before that by-election but it was actually sensible because the Liberals were heading for defeat there. They, they were only, only two points uh, uh, ahead of Labor on those weekend polls and with the speculation and the disastrous uh, leaks of the last few days that would have got worse between now and Saturday when they go to the polls. Now I think and Malcolm Turnbull certainly believes and so does Julie Bishop the most senior Liberal from Western Australia that the leadership change should give the Liberals a big boost in their vote in the Canning by-election on Saturday. Okay Laurie as you speak Tony Abbott is now leaving uh, the party room uh, or the ballot where the ballot was with uh, his supporters certainly uh, him holding up uh, stoically and if appearances count but no deep deep disappointment for them all there he goes to a an array of flash bulbs and uh, you've got to you got to feel sorry for a yeah. person in that position uh, you know the he who lives by the sword dies by the sword uh, he uh, he toppled Malcolm Turnbull and it's happened to him in return you know, uh, Julia Gillard toppled Kevin Rudd and, uh, and she was knifed in return. It's a pretty tough business and it almost always ends in tears. Peter, we've got more proof of that tonight. Well, just looking at that shot then of Malcolm Turnbull and Julie Bishop, I'll never forget the shot of Kevin Rudd and Julia Gillard walking up as leader and deputy leader after they rolled Kim Beasley. It's just, it's phenomenal. I think we've had about 65 changes of leadership in political parties, both federal and state, over the past 13 years. What does that say about our politics? Well, that's right, although it's not a new thing. I mean, I, I've been in this business for a long while, so I, I, I was covering leadership challenges back in the Whitlam days two challenges against John Gorton, who's the other sitting Liberal Prime Minister who was rolled in a challenge. This is not new, but it's, uh, 
it's still pretty ugly and it's pretty nasty for the people involved. And it's so immediate, isn't it, with uh, technology these days. We're covering this live as it happens. There's well, Malcolm that's, Turnbull. That's right. Everyone can see the emotions. Everyone can, can share, I think, uh, the, the, the sense of triumph and disappointment on the other. So as if you're just joining us, Malcolm Turnbull is the new leader of the Liberal Party. Uh, he's defeated Mal uh, Tony Abbott in an, uh, a spill there, a ballot this, uh, this evening, 54 votes to 44. Julie Bishop remains as deputy leader, although that position was put out on the table as well. She defeated Kevin Andrews 70 points to 30. You used the word heal a little earlier in our conversation, Laurie. Really and truly, there's so much bitterness. Can they heal quickly or can they at least put up appearances, if you like? Because as we spoke earlier as well, it's about survival now for a lot of these MPs or all of them. Look, there will be divisions and it will be hard to heal, Peter, but you've got to remember there's an election looming up in less than a year. So they've got to come together now and, uh, and I, I think they will, but uh, Malcolm Turnbull is not a popular man. A lot of the people who voted for him tonight don't particularly like him, but they think he's the only way they can survive and in politics it's all about hanging on to power. Malcolm Turnbull is their, their hope of hanging on to power and, uh, and maybe he's... Uh, he destroys or, or damages Bill Shorten's hopes of, uh, of getting power. Yes, indeed. Well, uh, Malcolm Turnbull was extraordinary this afternoon. Um, he's danced around the issues yeah. uh, for so long. Today, he took off his dancing shoes and put on his bobber boots because he just went in for Tony Abbott, didn't he? He didn't miss. No, he didn't miss. And uh, I think that was sensible because when Julia Gillard uh, succeeded Kevin Rudd in that sort of um, sudden coup that came as a shock to everybody, uh, there was no explanation given of why they'd toppled Kevin Rudd. Well, Malcolm Turnbull set out today the whole list of reasons why he was challenging Tony Abbott. And it was a, a pretty uh, uh, comprehensive list, a pretty serious list, a pretty convincing list. And uh, so, so there'd be no surprises about why he did it. And there was no surprise that he did it in the first place. This has been coming for a long while. We've all known it. Tony Abbott uh, had a, a, a narrow escape back in February when there was a spill motion. 39 of his uh, backbenchers and, and some front benches voted against him then even though there was no, no challenger, just an empty chair. That was a warning. He asked, pleaded with him for another six months to prove he could lift the uh, coalition out of the polling doldrums. He failed. He's had seven months. And I think the whole of Australia knew that this was coming.